Could you see yourself living in a shipping container? Well, maybe you should think again. In this case, a bunch of old shipping containers in London were made into really cool apartments that people now live in. Wow, I love it when people find new ways to reuse objects for something that they were not initially intended for. I mean, who would have thought you could use an old train and make it into a pizza restaurant? But why not? I mean, with our growing population, we end up using a lot more of our resources for homes, transportation and belongings. And all the species on the planet do need those resources, right? So I wonder, what would happen to those species if we humans didn't use our resources wisely? We're gonna take that question to Florida for a good example. This is one beautiful place. It's not hard to see why people want to live here. The thing is though, a lot of people move to Florida every day. And to live comfortably, people need resources. We need food, electricity, gas stations, fresh water, sewage treatment. And that's a lot of resources. And sometimes our use of resources could result in negative effects on nature. For example, when we grow crops to feed people and maintain our gardens, we sometimes use fertilizers. As a result, excess fertilizers can wash out of the fields and into streams and the ocean, polluting the waterways where people swim and animals live. Fertilizers are nutrients to organisms that perform photosynthesis, but if washed out into the ocean, they may trigger unwanted blooms of small algae like single-cell dinoflagellates. Dinoflagellate blooms are often reddish in color and called red tides, and excess of fertilizers in the water is thought to be one of the causes of red tides. When these blooms occur, a large number of dinoflagellates produce toxins in large quantities that can be lethal to fish and other marine life. Humans can also get sick, so no swimming or fishing during red tide outbreaks. Sorry, buddy. Some organisms are more vulnerable to red tide toxins than others. Take this great animal here in Florida, for example, the manatee. So manatees are pretty tolerant of people in the water. But sometimes, pollution caused by humans along with other factors can harm these manatees. So get this, manatees feed on seagrass. And during red tide outbreaks, these toxic algae also get attached to the seagrass, which ends up in these guys' stomachs. In the winter of 1995, nearly 400 manatees, almost 20% of the population, died from exposure to red tide toxin. But these guys face other problems too. Manatee survival is also threatened by things like fishing lines, crab cages and boat traffic. And there are lots of boats in Florida. The seagrass beds where manatees feed are shallow and calm, making them really popular for boating too. These slow moving manatees can get hit by speeding boats and cut by propellers, which unfortunately happens to many, many manatees every year. Well, the good thing is that we're learning new ways to protect the manatees. Today, for example, the federal government is establishing wildlife protected zones where the manatees can spend winter undisturbed. But these protection zones provide marine researchers with a great location to study these animals in the wild. And the discoveries may provide information that can help increase the protection of the animals. The state of Florida has to ensure that land development near the coast does not harm the manatees and seagrass beds. Scientists are learning better ways to control outbreaks of toxic algal blooms through controlled use of fertilizers. Also, most manatees areas now have strictly enforced boat speed limits. And of course, all of these actions also have a positive effect on many other organisms that share the manatee seagrass habitat. Well, our global population is still growing and a great demand for resources still exists. The good thing is that we're learning new ways to use our resources wisely, as well as recycling a lot of what we use. I'll give you an example. Depends on wearing 35% old plastic bottles.
Until next time, never stop exploring your world. So what can you do to help the environment? When you do buy new stuff, look for things that were grown or made in your local area. So less fuel is used to get the items to you. You can also find environmentally friendly materials. Environmentally, environment, environmentally, environmentally friendly materials. Recycle plastic bags by bringing them back to the store. Hey, you can start a recycling program at your school. Or you can grow an organic garden outside your classroom. Can you think of any other things you could do to use resources wisely? So never, never, never stop exploring your world.